Now look at this child of phenyl ketone urea. See what was happening to him was when the child was there in the intrauterine life. During the intrauterine life, the reaction was supposed to occur means the phenylalanine is supposed to convert into tyrosine and we require two enzymes, the hydroxylase and reductase. But this child was not having these enzymes. But still the child was able to do these reaction when he was in the intrauterine life. Because the child was not able to produce but the maternal enzymes was available. The mother was giving the enzymes to do the reaction. So when he is in the intrauterine life, no problem. When But once the birth occurred, once the child is out, now after 72 hours, the enzymes will be washed out. The maternal enzymes are gone. Now the child has to produce its own enzyme. And because the child is having the enzyme deficiency, now the reaction is not happening. And the phenylalanine will start increasing. So the first thing first, the child will have the problem in phenylketone urea at birth or after 72 hours, after 72 hours. The child is absolutely normal at birth because the maternal enzymes were doing the reaction. The clinical features will occur after 72 hours. The mousy smell is due to which molecule? Is it phenylalanine or phenylacetate? Which molecule is leading to the mousy smell? The mousy smell is due to phenylacetate. It is not phenylalanine, it is the phenylacetate which is having mousy smell. The child will have mental retardation plus there is going to be relatively fair skin complexion. These ketones are very bad. They are going to damage the brain. So the child may develop seizures, failure to thrive, hyperactivity. These things can also be there. Right? What are the tests that we can do? One we can do is the heel prick test. In the heel prick test, we are going to prill the hip of the heel of the child. In India, usually we don't do that. In US, every child is mandated to undergo this test. After 72 hours, they are going to prick the heel of the baby and they are going to take few drops of the blood and in that they are going to check the levels of the enzyme. The other test that we can do is the Guthire test. The investigation of choice is tender mass spectrometry. Tender mass spectrometry. What is tender mass spectrometry is we are going to take the sample and we are going to put in this tube where we have a laser detector. And that is going to detect that in this sample, how much phenylalanine and how much tyrosine is there. Now look at the normal graph, the normal report and the report of phenylketone urea. Normally, for example, the phenylalanine is this much and the tyrosine is this much. Look at the tyrosine levels and look at the phenylalanine levels. But in phenylketone urea, in phenylketone urea, look at the phenylalanine levels and look at the tyrosine levels. And now here you can see the difference. Normally the tyrosine should not be less, but here the phenylalanine is very high and the tyrosine is very less. This is the tender mass spectrometry report of the phenylketone urea boy. This is how the patient is going to present to us. We have some other tests also, but the most important is tender mass spectrometry, where the phenylalanine is going to be very high. The other test that we can do is such as perichloric test, which is non-specific, which is done in other disease also. How we are going to uh, treat this child? We need to explain to the mother is your child is having a problem that he is unable to digest the phenylalanine molecule. So you need to give us such a diet where there is very less phenylalanine or no phenylalanine. We need to decrease the phenylalanine in the diet. If the child will not eat phenylalanine, the tyrosine will not be made. So we need to increase the tyrosine in the diet. This is the diet modification that we are supposed to do. Decrease phenylalanine and increase tyrosine. Decrease phenylalanine, increase tyrosine, right? This is all about the first individual amino acid, phenylalanine. And the very important disease, phenylketonuria, there are three symptoms, fair skin, decreased IQ, and there's going to be bad smell in the urine. Let's quickly answer the question. What is the inheritance pattern of phenylketonuria? Autosomal recessive. Phenylketonuria is due to deficiency of what? It is due to deficiency of either phenylalanine hydroxylase, or it is due to deficiency of BH2 reductase. Mousy smell of the urine is because of what? It is because of phenyl alanine or phenyl acetate. It is because of phenyl acetate. Bad smell in the urine. Skin complexion is going to be fair. The IQ is going to be less. The child will be absolutely normal at birth. The symptoms will come after 72 hours. 
what is the investigation of choice it is the tandem mass spectrometry and the diet modification is supposed to be done there is going to be decrease in the phenyl allylin in the diet and we need to increase the tyrosine okay you answer one question tyrosine is a essential amino acid or non essential amino acid normally tyrosine is essential or non essential normally tyrosine is non essential you can you can make it from phenyl allylin but in a child of phenyl ketone urea we cannot make tyrosine so i can say in phenyl ketone urea tyrosine becomes an essential amino acid